Did you know that there's people that completely get rid of H. pylori and do so without ever touching antibiotics? It is possible if you approach it the right way. In this video, I'm going to break down how exactly I would treat H. pylori naturally, step by step using research-based herbs, foods, and supplements that help you heal your stomach lining from H. pylori and restore gut balance. I'm going to share with you the exact plan that I would personally follow and how to stack everything to get the best possible results. What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, creator of SIBO Shortcut, and the gut health supplement bloat blocker. In this video, we're going to briefly cover what is H. pylori, why H. pylori can be difficult to treat, some of the current standard antibiotic treatments. I'll mention them really briefly. And then the majority of the video is going to be what natural herbs to use for H. pylori, foods to boost H. pylori treatment, and then supplements to add in to help the treatment go better as well. As a disclaimer, the information in this video is for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. All right, getting started now, what is H. pylori? If you're watching this video, you probably have a good idea, but H. pylori, it's a type of bacteria that typically infects the lining of your stomach, or at least in most cases, it's the stomach. There are some cases where it's the upper portion of the small intestine. H. pylori is incredibly common. It's estimated that probably at least half the people in the world have some level of H. pylori in their body, and it's not necessarily an issue, but when it gets to be overgrown, this is when it becomes a problem. It can cause symptoms like bloating, nausea, and acid reflux. If you get diagnosed with gastritis or if you're told you have an ulcer, there's a good chance H. pylori is behind this. And what makes it really problematic is that it can damage your stomach's protective mucus layer, which can allow acid to irritate that tissue underneath and cause you a lot of pain. What makes H. pylori difficult to treat? There's three reasons for this. Number one, H. pylori, it can burrow and hide down deep into the stomach lining which can make it harder for your immune system and even antibiotics to get rid of it. Number two, antibiotic resistance is becoming an issue when talking about H. pylori, thus another reason for this video, talking about an herbal approach. And then number three, which is kind of the kicker, even if you have a successful H. pylori treatment, like the overgrowth is gone, if you don't improve your overall gut health, it's not super uncommon for H. pylori to come back. Before I go over my recommendations, I'm gonna tell you a couple things not to do for H. pylori. So what not to do for H. pylori if you have been diagnosed with an H. pylori overgrowth, it's usually a good idea to eliminate foods and supplements that can increase stomach acid. There's two reasons we don't want to increase stomach acid. Number one is that it can make the pain worse. You have an ulcer and if we're adding more acid to it, you're going to feel it. And number two, it can make it more difficult for an ulcer to heal. So even though I do recommend betaine HDL, apple cider vinegar, all this stuff to boost stomach acid, it's probably a good idea to hold off on doing some of this stuff until the H. pylori is resolved as well as the ulcer is gone. So to name a few, things like coffee, lemon juice, tomato sauce, even carbonated water can make symptoms worse if you have H. pylori. What are the standard antibiotic treatments for H. pylori? The original OG treatment for H. pylori is known as triple therapy. Essentially, we're using something to reduce stomach acid known as a proton pump inhibitor along with two antibiotics amoxicillin and chlorithromycin are two antibiotics that are commonly used for this due to resistance it was then moved to what's known as quadruple therapy or we're adding another agent called bismuth and then even more recently than that there's a new acid blocker called venazopran and that's being used to antibiotics now the brand name for the new product is boquesna that has all three of those medications all in one and that's being used somewhat frequently so there is a lot of new antibiotics coming Coming out and a lot of research being done on H. pylori from the pharmaceutical standpoint. Switching gears, now we're getting into antimicrobial herbs, the more natural treatments. A few antimicrobials that I've found to be very helpful for H. pylori include mastic gum, berberine, oil of oregano, and bismuth. If you do want to see an exact protocol of what I recommend for H. pylori, I have a full script link down in the description of the video below. It's a 14-day treatment, tells you exactly what to take, when to take it, and the dosages. In addition to doing these supplements, the antimicrobial herbs, there's another thing you can do right before the treatment that helps boost how well it works. You notice I mentioned for the antibiotics, they use a proton pump inhibitor with the treatment. This does a couple things. Number one, it does reduce stomach acid. So hopefully we're lowering the pain if you have a stomach ulcer.
ulcer, and also we're lowering the pH in the stomach. The H. pylori bacteria, they hate stomach acid. So if your stomach is really acidic, they're actually going to try to burrow further down into the lining of your stomach, which makes it harder for the antimicrobials to work. If we do the opposite, if we take a small amount of baking soda, maybe like a quarter of a teaspoon and a half a glass of water, this makes the digestive tract more basic, which usually we don't want. But now when we're treating H. pylori, we're theoretically making the H. pylori more active and more susceptible to being killed off by these herbs that we're using. So if you are looking at the protocol down below, if you have time, if you can remember, really try to do quarter teaspoon baking soda in a little bit of water. Drink this about 15 minutes before your treatments. Now we'll talk about some foods. What foods can you eat with your antimicrobial herb treatment to really supercharge your treatment? There's several foods that have pretty good research on them that seem to deter H. pylori growth. Probably the number one top food in this category are broccoli sprouts. There's a component in them called sulforaphane, which basically H. pylori hates. This is not the same thing as broccoli. Broccoli has far, far less sulforaphane than broccoli sprouts. I'm going to throw out some dosages that I have seen in previous studies used. For the broccoli sprouts, it was about 70 grams per day, which is about 2.3 ounces. In terms of volume, this is about two cups of loosely packed broccoli sprouts. There's also virgin olive oil, or you can use extra virgin olive oil. One point to make if you're thinking about using olive oil as a food to include in your treatment, I would get one that has a very bitter taste. If you've cooked with olive oil before or tasted it, you know there's a pretty wide range of strengths of olive oil, I would say, or qualities. Some olive oil, you can sip it and you really don't get that bitter taste. I would get one that if you do taste the olive oil, it's really, really strong. And the dosage that I've seen from previous studies is about two tablespoons per day. Next food I've seen in research studies is cranberry juice. I've seen studies using 250 milliliters or about eight ounces twice a day. I've seen bovine lactoferrin, which is a component found in cow's milk, about 250 milligrams of lactoferrin daily in divided doses. Probably better to use it as a supplement because otherwise this is about four cups of cow's milk, which if you really like milk, you could do this, but it's probably easier for you just to do it in supplement form. If you want to see more about a video where I talk about all these dosages and see the actual research studies, I'm going to link this down in the description below as well. Last food I'm going to touch on is honey. Honey does have antibacterial activity against H. pylori. Since we're talking about two of my favorite things, number one is honey, and number two is gut health, I'd probably be coming out with a video very soon showing some more research on honey and H. pylori and what to do. It looks like doing about half a teaspoon two to three times a day may be a good amount of honey, and some types of honey that I found in research that may be the best include black forest honey, lang nice honey, mountain honey, and manuka honey. All these foods that I mentioned before, these can inhibit the growth of H. pylori. One clarification I want to make when talking about these foods, while they can help with the elimination or suppression of H. pylori, it's kind of uncertain if these can be actual treatments alone without the antimicrobial herbs being used as well. In the research studies that I looked at, it seemed like they did a good job for a short period of time, but then when stopped, H. pylori did come back a decent percentage of the time. So I still recommend these foods as a treatment boost while doing your treatment, but also still use the supplements and antimicrobials that we're mentioning in this video. Last section, what other supplements can we use to help make our H. pylori treatment more effective and help heal our gut quicker. First one I'll touch on is probiotics. This meta-analysis from February 2025 looked at a variety of probiotics in terms of helping get rid of H. pylori. Of the probiotics looked at, one called Bifidobacterium longum seemed to work the best. A variety of lactobacillus strains seemed to be second best and followed by Saccharomyces boulardii, which didn't seem to work as well as the others. So taking some sort of probiotic, ideally something with Bifidobacterium longum and a variety of lactobacillus strains would probably be your best option for H. pylori and doing this during your treatment and maybe even up to a month after. There's zinc carnosine, which can help heal the stomach lining using a dosage of about 75 milligrams twice daily is probably a good dose going through the treatment and afterwards to help your gut heal. There's glutamine powder, which is really good for gut lining. A dose of about 2.5 grams to 5 grams twice daily may be appropriate for this. Fiber supplements can also help. One that I've seen in previous studies is a product called Herbulk. It's a combination of oat hull fiber and psyllium. And in the study looked at, we use seven grams twice daily. I'm going to link a video with the treatment down in the description below of the video that I'm talking about. Finally, digestive enzymes can be helpful because going through the treatment, we are going to be intentionally lowering stomach acid at times. So taking a digestive enzyme may be helpful with you breaking down food. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel for more related content. Since you watched till the end, I think you're going to enjoy one of these two videos here next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.